Hey, next is a few comments from Paul Johnson about the future of fishing. You know, as I travel around the United States and North America talking with fishermen, they all want to know what's coming. What's the future going to be like? As we celebrate production of our 500th show and more than 40 years of pioneering work in television, travel with us along one portion of the long road that has taken us to where we are today. Let's look at our connection on your behalf to fishing for nearshore saltwater fish. We talk a lot about the different entities in the fishing world. In Fisherman has long maintained that if it swims in North American waters, we want to understand it and catch it. There's no shortage of options in freshwater. Ooh, look at the belly on that dude. But we also have a long-standing love of fishing for saltwater fish. Inshore fishing, as it's called, is compelling because the fish are spectacular fighters, many of them pulling hard and jumping high. No need to spend a bundle to get in on the action. Our point has always been that some of the tackle and techniques for these fish transfer readily from the fishing for freshwater species like largemouth bass and muskies. Wow! Tarpon are as good as it gets when it comes to exciting action from a beast of a fish that jumps bridge high. Coming up, coming up. And goes glory bound. Oh, very nice. The staff begins in the 1980s to explore this fishing. One destination is Key West, where chumming tactics are used in the channel of the Key West Harbor. Tarpons spend most of their time targeting baitfish and crabs, but also have a taste for trashy dead bait bycatch from shrimp boats. That's quite a gruesome pile of stuff that you have there, Greg. <laughs> we love it dearly. <laughs> Don't live without it. <laughs> But it's the bridge areas in the Keys that offer even more exciting fishing. The most famous spots are the Seven Mile Bridge area just outside of Marathon and the Bahia Honda Bridge near Big Pine Key. From March through June, tidal flows attract forage and tarpon gather to ride the tide and partake of the bounty. Anglers connect by casting jigs or drifting bait, usually pinfish, mullet, and crab. It's here that the staff experiments with some of the first early fluorocarbon lines. Meanwhile, some of the tackle of the time leaves much to be desired. Thankfully, pen spin fisher spinning reels are available and the rule of the day, with 8,500 models spooled full of 20-pound test monofilament and later braided lines. Spin fishers remain a solid choice even today. We also use pen casting reels like the 975 for tarpon duty. Penn has long been on the cutting edge of the saltwater sea. This too is where the staff uses circle hooks to present bait fish and crabs. Most of the fishing world has never seen these hooks before. Of course, there are all kinds of tricks to this trade. So it is that the in-fisherman connection to saltwater fishing with circle hooks and fluorocarbon line, along with vastly improving fishing rods and reels, begins to bring these revolutionary products into use in fresh water. Before about the early 1990s, the only circle hooks available for catfishing, for example, are the larger commercial versions of hooks like the classic Eagle Claw 190. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Revs your heart. This segment brought to you by P-Line. Because we fish. You know, actually, plug fishing, if you get one out of ten, you're lucky. Something that'll help your odds go up on hooking them with plugs is going to a little bit bigger hook and just sharpen the dickens out of them. Time to continue our deep dive into the archives to capture in fishermen's commitment to connecting freshwater wranglers with fishing for nearshore saltwater fish. No reason a person can't come down here with like a bass boat or a walleye boat or anything you wanted to, and you could do just exactly the same thing we're doing. It's safe to say that in fishermen editors also do their part to influence what's happening on the Florida tarpon scene as they bring their expertise with lure presentations into play for fish that typically are only targeted with live bait or fly fishing tackle. Countdown magnum rapalas and other plugs are used around the bridge pass areas. Editors also are the first to use 1.5 ounce owner saltwater bullet head jigs coupled with soft bait bodies to catch tarpon. A newly introduced product from Freshwater, the Lunker City Sluggo works particularly well. The 9-inch Sluggo, trimmed to 6 inches on that exceptional jig head, is one of the deadliest of all lure presentations for tarpon in tidal current. Still is, and so much more. Are we ready? Yes, we are. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Stangy, along with Captain David Navarro. And the reason that I like barracuda is because they have a real attitude. They are one of the most aggressive fish that you're ever going to see. They're spectacular fishing for barracuda, which can be one of the most aggressive of all the inshore fish species. At the time, many saltwater guides treat them like an afterthought. But staff members having long fish for muskies immediately recognize the appeal. Sharks, too, are part of the parade as editors shoot some of the first shallow water footage ever captured of fishing for black tips, lemons, and hammerheads. This also is probably the first recorded underwater footage of this kind of fishing, captured with a camera in an early day underwater housing. So many other saltwater species enter the scene, but we can't begin to chronicle the exacting history of each fishery. Still, in arena after arena, the staff's there, exploring the options. Easily the most vibrant inshore option of all remains for the redfish, which, like the striper, grows to prodigious sizes, busts bait fish with abandon, and pulls long and hard. Here again, in fishermen editors have chased these fish for more than 30 years, constantly emphasizing how readily tactics and tackle for largemouth bass transfer to successful fishing for redfish. We fished from South Carolina near Charleston, south to Florida, which has fishing along both of its coasts. Texas also has fabulous fishing. One of our early favorites has been at Orange Beach, Alabama, which usually peaks from late December into March. Fish can be in backwater areas, estuaries. Other times, they're just off the beach in the ocean. Venice, Louisiana probably has the best fishing in the world for big fish and plenty of them. And while many other fisheries are seasonal, the fishing at Venice is a non-stop affair all season long. Weather permitting, of course. Another favorite destination for lots and lots, and we do mean lots of action, is a trip with Captain C.J. Rojas at Lafitte, Louisiana, about 30 minutes south of New Orleans. It's our home away from home on the bayou, our Cajun connection for great fishing all season long and has been for going on 20 years. Beautiful. They crush the crabs with their crushes. That is a pretty fish. 